A monster week of earnings for tech uh, with Alphabet set to report tomorrow after the bell, but Google's search dominance could be disruptive as new AI-powered search startups crop up. Dieter Bosa has that in today's Tech Check. Dee, do you mean to tell me that these startups truly do pose a threat to the dominance of Google in search? It's a good question. How do you disrupt, you know, one of the greatest business models of all time? But it's more of an existential threat, I would say. Google search is not going anywhere anytime soon, but there are cracks. And Wall Street wonders if that could lead to Google falling behind in this AI race or having that Golden Goose advertising disrupted. Now, it may not be Bing, Microsoft's Bing, that Google needs to worry about. Rather, a new crop of generative AI startups that are native Gen AI making a run at the king. We've talked about perplexity in the past. That's backed by the likes of Jeff Bezos and NVIDIA. Another one just on the scene is Arc. Um, it released Arc Search over the weekend, and we tried it out. We're going to show you a video. We searched Paris Olympics. And it read through six web pages and then neatly got them all together, laid out the dates, host city, new sports, among some other facts. No ads and a pretty clean user interface here. Let's contrast that with a traditional Google search on a smartphone. You'll see that there's a list of Twitter or X accounts up at the top, a lot of the same information, but you got to scroll down. This is more cluttered and it's harder to find. So Google's generative AI experimental search that's available for some users, it gives you a cleaner response, similar to that of ARCs and perplexities. But Tyler, the point here is that Google isn't willing to go all in, offer this to all of their users right now, because that could potentially cannibalize its business before it really figures out how to incorporate search and what it's going to do with advertising. So yes, these are very, very early days, and neither of these engines, perplexity or ARC, these new names, aren't going to make a dent in the market share right now. But it kind of tells Wall Street how Google search could be disrupted. You know, one of the things that I've found interesting as I have played around a little bit with uh, artificial intelligence, whether it's BARD or ChatGPT, is that it seems to excel when I ask it a question like, write me 500 words on the history uh, of the conflict in the Middle East, or write, tell me about uh, why Paris uh, is a great place for the Olympics. The things that are qualitative uh, mm -hmm. in nature in some cases. So what would you be looking for then? What do you want it to? Or I guess are you wondering sort of what's the I'm, use case? What is I'm, it? Where is it actually going to improve? I'm businesses? killing time, D. I'm killing <laughs> time. I'm actually I'm usually looking to get educated as opposed to actually finding something. Right. You know what? I was actually uh, texting back and forth with the CEO and founder Perplexity this morning. I'm saying, you know, who are you really seeing use your engine, right? Because I think same for me, Tyler. I'm using it sort of as an assistant or a co-pilot when mm -hmm. I'm researching. But of course, you can't trust it entirely. So you got to go back and find all the sourcing. But he said that it's knowledge economy workers that are really using the app. And I hear the same thing around San Francisco. It, people who are using it are actually using it to replace the Google search. And it's not that it's like all that much better than Google Bard or ChatGPT. It's that the interface is so much better. And I showed you the example from Arc. It's just cleaner. Arc. And there's not a whole bunch of other stuff on the I'm screen. I'm writing this down, Deidre. I'm writing ARK or ARC? ARC, not to be confused with Kathy Wood's Arc. Okay. ARC and Perplexity. Those are sort of the two that are gaining some traction here in Silicon Valley.